Hey everyone, I'm Joe. Today it's time for me to do my wrap up for January 2019. January was a really good reading month. I read 17 books in total, which is slightly higher than the average for me, which is normally between 12 to 14. Overall, the quality of the books was also really good. There was only one or two books that were hmm, dubious at best. And overall, I'm very happy with what I've read. And without further delay, I'll start I'm talking about the book. The first of which were read throughout the course of the month because they were short story collections. And those are two short story collections by Philip K. Dick. These are Minority Report and We Can Remember It For You Wholesale, Volume 3, uh, 4 and 5 in a five volume collection, which means I have read all five volumes now. These contain, I believe, pretty much every short story that Philip K. Dick ever wrote. And I can say straight away that I much prefer Philip K. Dick's short story writing over his full uh, novel writing. Because his novels has a problem that I will talk about later in the video. Um, but for now I would say his short stories are uh, faster to the point. They are more amusing. The ideas are just as strange and mad, but because they are shorter, Philip K. Dick is able to actually keep to uh, a point and he's able to focus his writing, which is a problem that he seems to have. He seems to lose his way a lot. With short stories, he doesn't. Overall, he contain a variety of really interesting ideas and good solid writing, and overall I really did enjoy them as a whole. The next book that I read was Space Opera by Catherine M. Valente. I read this because of Kelsey from the Fancy Hat Lady Read. And in fact, not just read it because of Kelsey, this was from Kelsey. Actually, Kelsey brought me this for a Christmas present, which is the first ever Christmas present I've been bought due to Booktube, which I feel really quite honoured about and really appreciative of. So, again, I've already said this in the book or video that it featured this. Thank you, Kelsey, for this. I do appreciate it. And I also did really enjoy it because the plot is quite simple and quite mad sounding but also really fun. And that is quite simply that there is a, a sort of a intergalactic version of um, a very well known sort of European singing show which you all know and I personally do not like but if you're into that thing then it's great. The Eurovision Song Contest. And basically, Earth has been told that they must enter this intergalactic Eurovision Fun Contest. Otherwise, Earth will be sterilised in humanity because humanity is not very useful at the time. So they get a very rude awakening to sort of intergalactic society and culture from multiple different alien species. And this former musician has to basically create a song that will enable humanity to survive. Sounds weird, it is. The writing is really um, good and frankly really enjoyable and this is the first ever Catherine M. Valente that I've read and it will not be the last because her writing style was just it was fast but it needed to be. But it was able to slow down, there was some sort of deeper moments, there were some very light moments, you know, sort of fluffy moments I suppose you call them. You know, the overall feel of the book was just right, I thought, and I really did enjoy this overall. And I would recommend this if you're looking to think of it lighter and just something fun, frankly. Next up, I read The Road by uh, Cormac McCarthy. Now, this book they made into a film in 2007, I believe it was, with Viggo Mortensen. There are only two characters, realistically, in this book, apart from a few odd people that they meet, and that is the man, or the father, and his son, or the boy, as he's often called. And you, you do not know what their names are, and it's kind of irrelevant to the plot. It's just a man and his son wandering around a post-apocalyptic America, or some such. You're never told exactly what the disaster was, but you almost certainly it's human-made, maybe a war or something. And... They're just trying to survive, you know, they're trying to wander around, not get attacked by random bandits that they 
um, are on the roads and such. They're trying to avoid too large cities because of course cities tend to have people still living there which can be quite violent and they're just trying to scavenge from any kind of smaller settlements and rural areas that they can and just manage as best they can. The book is dark and quite grim. The writing style is, well, Cormac McCarthy's sort of own unique style where he doesn't do as much punctuation and grammar as, frankly, most other authors and what you would expect from a published author, frankly. He doesn't really do that. Um, he gets away with it to a certain degree. However, this is actually a reread for me and I did not enjoy it on this reread nowhere near as much as I did the first time I read it. When I read this for the first time, about six years ago maybe or something, I was really impressed and I thought it was frankly fantastic. This time I thought it was good, but nothing out of the ordinary. The fact that you never know what's gone on, and it's just, they're just wandering around, I found sort of frustrating this time and I wanted to learn more, but you never do. It's just the wandering around after some kind of event and survival is the only thing they're interested in. It's got some sort of vaguely interesting psychology in it, but again, it's fairly simplistic. So it's good and I would recommend it, but it's, uh, it's of its own particular style. It would, this book will not work for everybody. I know it often doesn't. Some people think it's fantastic. A lot of people greatly dislike Cormac McCarthy. I'm, I think he's reasonable, but nothing truly astonishing. The next book was Land Under England by Joseph O'Neill and yes this is one of the yellow SF masterworks published by Collins. Now this is an interesting concept for a novel although a fairly simple one in some respects although curious in its um, execution and that is a man whose father has been missing for many years. He gets to a certain point in his life where he decides enough is enough he wants to find his missing father. So, he does indeed find some sort of trace of him around these strange ruins he, and he finds an entrance to this underground area. He goes into it, ends up getting sort of somewhat lost in this underground area and he ends up essentially coming across a uh, deep underground settlement filled with former Romans. Yes, the Roman Empire, underground. But their way of government is not the um, Roman Empire way, you know, the, with emperors and such. In a way, it's rather more unusual, and indeed, that's where the science fiction element comes in. I don't want to spoil anything by saying what the control system is, but it's strange. And I like the idea and the concept. But the writing I thought was just a bit dull at times. It, the pacing was okay, but it was a little bit too careful at points. And just something a little bit lacking with the book. I don't know, maybe, I want to say passion, but enthusiasm for the subject. It just felt through this one man who was not that likeable on this adventure. And I wasn't super impressed. But I like the concept, so if you like like me, the sound of the concept, then I would recommend it because the concept is really nice. I like that. The writing, eh, okay, frankly. The next book I read was Sissy Fian by Denpao Toshima. Now, I read this book due to Rachel, who is a booktuber whose channel is Kalanadi. Obviously, I'll link all these people in the description box below, of course. And this book is almost certainly the weirdest and strangest book I have ever read in my life. And if you know me, you know that I like strange and weird books. And in fact, this book is so strange and weird that I honestly don't know how to describe it. And I'm not actually sure if I'm going to attempt it now because it's just really strange and bizarre. Um, it's about a sort of settlement or a village of sorts set around this company under the very large man who gets bits removed from him which sounds really bizarre i i don't know how to describe this book i truly don't now rachel kind did a review of this hence why i read it i really enjoyed it and i really 
would recommend it if you're looking for, if you're looking for something very strange and bizarre because yeah this really these requirements really uh they exceed them badly because even though I still don't entirely understand what went on in this book and indeed I can't even describe the plot properly or indeed the writing style or anything else about the book there's something about it that I just really liked I think it's just the strangeness and the weirdness that I will definitely have to reread it in a few years time and try and figure out actually what went on because at the moment I'm at a laugh which is amusing by itself I, I literally I don't know how to talk about a book at all other than say it's weird and strange I loved it the next book that I read was Robot vs Fairies, edited by Dominic Prisian and Nava Wolf. Now this I read due to Kelsey, the fancy out lady reads again. I know that she had an interest in reading this several months ago, we mentioned that uh, it's only just been released now. And I thought for a change I would read something a little bit different for me because I obviously read a lot of science fiction, but uh, books where they have fantasy elements and science fiction and especially with sort of fairy tale-ish retellings is fairly rare for me and they often don't work for me. This sounded a bit different however because it's a short story collection by various different often well-known authors I thought I'd give it a good chance and I'm glad that I did because I greatly enjoyed this book. It was really enjoyable, nearly every short story in it worked for me extremely well. Yes there was one or two that was a bit frankly strange and I didn't enjoy them as much but they were very rare. I think there's only two stories in this that I actually didn't like. Every other short story I actually thought was extremely interesting with some great ideas, great writing and they were just enjoyable overall. It was a great selection where some of the short stories are about the fairies and the others will say why they prefer fairies and fantasy and some will be the opposite. We'll talk about robots, therefore science fiction and why they prefer that and some will be a mix of robots and technology and the magical and fairies and it's an interesting combination which worked extremely well and I would recommend this book if you're looking for something you know along those kind of ideas because it does work out extremely well overall. Next up is a geology by Peter F. Hamilton and that is the Chronicles of the Fall of Geology which contains two books those are The Abyss Beyond Dreams and Night Without Stars. Now, this uh, geology is set in the same world as his Void Trilogy and his Commonwealth Trilogy and that world is indeed the Commonwealth uh, Universe or the Greater Commonwealth Universe as it's always known. And now I'm going to do a separate review of this geology in the next few weeks because I've reviewed nearly everything by Hamilton at this point. And indeed these two books are the last books by Hamilton I haven't read not including the current trilogy that he's currently in the middle of writing and there is one other book that is proving it slightly trickier to get but I will get it before much longer. So I'm really happy that I've read these, I will do a separate review. These are Space Upper and they are very good Space Upper although they're not my favourite by him. They feature the usual Hamilton ideas of a large cast of characters, a big drastic and dramatic plot line that often features death, destruction and the fate of a world or the universe at stakes. He does this well, this is a good example, again it's not my favourite but it's still good solid Peter F. Hamilton writing and if you like Peter F. Hamilton which obviously I do because this marks nearly a thing I've read by him now then I would highly recommend this although do not start with this duology though I would recommend you read at least the other two sets of books, The Void and the um, Commonwealth Geology by him first. This makes a few little allusions to certain things in those books which won't spoil them books and it won't spoil this but it, it works better if you know the history and you know the world a bit more which obviously at this point I do. I'd recommend reading them after those two sets of books. I then read Mission of Gravity by Hal Clement and yes yet another SF masterwork in the Yellow Spines. Now the idea of this book is very simple. Humanity has um, crash landed by accident obviously a space probe or satellite of some kind on this very strange world. The problem is 
they cannot go down and uh, pick up the remains of this space probe themselves because the gravity on this world is extremely high it is 700 times stronger than earth which phys physically and biologically we cannot handle i mean we would just die but even our uh, equipment and our technology can cannot really counter this it's just too powerful anything would be destroyed physically we can't go down and even remote probes are problematic because even they wouldn't survive and such though thankfully however there is a sentient species on the planet which is very strange because they are certainly not human like they are more like um, very small intelligent insects essentially humanity is able to contact them and basically they do, do, do a deal where they will share some of their technology in return for these insects going across on a journey to get their satellite for them and it's a very strange concept in some ways although it's fairly simple you know, it's just a journey of an alien species to rescue um, technology and the characters whilst being alien are actually really interesting because they've got a slightly alternative outlook on things unsurprisingly you know what we've the way their world works and I did actually quite enjoy this more than I expected at first and for the first like 20 or 30 pages I was a bit dubious to be honest but then certain things start make, making more sense and it becomes a lot more enjoyable and the ideas make sense and everything starts coming together so um, I would say if you read this just give it a bit of a chance though because it might like it did with me take 20 or 30 pages before things click well, obviously they might not of course you know, and that's, there's always that chance with any book but this is a very interesting book and I would recommend it overall for something a little bit interesting the next book that I read was Johannes Cabal the Necromancer by Jonathan L Howard I read this because of Andrea from Infinite Text a fellow booktuber I will obviously link her channel in the box below this is a really interesting really enjoyable book for very strange reasons because the main character is indeed the name of the book is Johannes Carbal and he's indeed a necromancer or in a world where he raises the dead to do his bidding and such you know, and can commune with demons and spirits and such and he's not a particularly nice character at all unsurprisingly I mean you know, he deals with raising dead people up and telling them to do stuff and sometimes he has to kill them first so then he can raise them back up as dead which is you know makes him quite self-centered and a slightly disturbing character in this book he does a deal with essentially satan to get his uh, soul back but he has to give and receive 100 souls willingly back to him they can trade over for his soul and he does this by a train carnival and he has to get people to basically uh, sell their souls to him and therefore say it so he can get his back strange concept unlikable main character although he's sort of likeable in how mad and fast paced he is I greatly enjoyed this book because it's just really enjoyable because yes it's dark and weird and some of the parts are quite nasty in terms of what he's making people do you know he's manipulating them into selling their souls but somehow it becomes really enjoyable and there is actually quite a lot of humour in it dark humour but humour nonetheless and I greatly enjoyed this book and indeed I've actually got the other uh, second and third books above me uh, just there and I will be reading them shortly because this was enjoyable and I enjoyed it the next book that I read was The Core of the Sun by Joanna Sinisalo I read this because of Rachel Calinardi again and this is a very interesting book this has an interesting concept where it is a, a set in Finland and it is a totalitarian government um, the female population has been indoctrinated and sort of coerced and forced pretty nastily to be either one of two types essentially you are either classed as submissive and therefore you are allowed to breed and create you know the next generation or you are too uh, basically intelligent for the government's liking and you are too independent minded 
Therefore, you're not allowed to breathe and are treated very, very poorly indeed. And there's also a very interesting idea with um, chilies in the book as well, bull peppers. And this is a very dark book in some ways, and at points you're like, hmm, really? Oh, it's got some quite touchy uh, subjects that some people might have issues with. It's extremely well written, extremely powerful, and I am extremely glad I read this because it was overall a fantastic experience. I am really happy that I read it. And indeed, I will reread it within a few years because there are li probably little things, despite the fact it's only relatively a small book, that I have bound to have missed. And there are certain nuances that I have almost certainly missed as well. Rachel reviewed this book and talked about it in a much more intelligent and eloquent manner than I have managed here. So I will link that review as well. But suffice to say, this is a very good solid book. I know some people link it to things like The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood, which I have not read myself, so I can't do that, but it sounds like it could well be that kind of vein to me. So, you know, I may have to look into that book as well. But yeah, I like this a lot. The next book that I read was Settling Ascends by Josiah Bancroft. Now, I've heard this book mentioned multiple times in the last three to four months and I thought for a change I would actually jump on the sort of currently reading bandwagon and actually read something that is actually currently being discussed and I'm actually glad I did because I liked the concept and the ideas behind this novel the writing was okay it was a little bit dry and a little bit sort of slow paced at times but you can forgive that one thing I did not like, and indeed the one thing I disagree with is many people, and indeed it's, it's even got it on the blurb on the back of the book, with saying that the main character, called Thomas Senley, hence the name of the book, is a really likeable everyday character. Well, he might be an everyday character, but he's not likeable, or at least I didn't like him. I actually thought he was really annoying, and frankly, an idiot for most of the book. And indeed, that kind of brought the book for me very slightly. I will be reading probably the second and they've just re uh, released a third book in this world but I'm not in a hurry to do so but I probably will do in the, probably the next few months or so. The concept of the novel is Thomas Ending goes to visit um, the Tower of Babel with his new wife on a honeymoon and his wife disappears, kidnapped um, eaten, murdered, you do not know, he doesn't know either, so he has to ascend the tower, hence the title of the book, and he has adventures within the Tower of Bible, which nobody knows how many floors there are, it's this great big tall tower that goes up beyond sight, and I like that concept, but again, the writing and the main character was eh, not, not perfect, but sort of forgivable, just about. The next book that I read was Our Friends from Philip 8 by Philip K. Dick. Now, I'm not going to be dwelling on this book or indeed talking about this book very much because unlike the short story collections by him, which worked for me extremely well, I can say almost uh, with certainty nowadays that I much prefer for his short stories, as I've actually already said in this video, than his full length novels. And indeed, this novel is an exact um, example, a perfect example of why his novels don't really work for me as often as his short stories do because he had an interesting idea, the writing is fairly solid for a certain length of time and then if I feel as though Philip K. Dick just lost all interest and all enthusiasm, he just like, oh well, I've got to finish the book now, he writes it, he writes an ending that vaguely works and then he gets published and he gets paid. It's basically his writing books purely get paid, in some cases, with full length novels. And this, I feel, is one of them. If he'd spent more time on it and developed the idea, it could have been something more interesting, but he didn't. It just felt as he's just like, right, let's just get this finished and let's just get, you know, the royalties from the publisher at the time. Which is that not something I like to say, but it does happen. You know, writers do need to earn a living after all, so, you know, I'm not surprised, but it's just a shame. 
Next up is the Eye of the World by Robert Jordan and this is an extremely large book. It's about 800 pages, though it's certainly not the largest in the series. This is an epic fantasy series. It is 14 books long. This is a very well known series and indeed I'm not going to talk about it too much now frankly. Uh, I buddy read this with Andrea, Infinite Text again, and I know that she I believe we'll be doing reviews of each book as we read them over the next year because we are planning to, not just, well, not just planning, we'll be reading all 14 books together. And I enjoyed this far more on a reread than I did the first time. I read the first seven books three years ago and I just sort of stopped reading the series for some reason. I'm not sure why exactly. But this was much better now because it. The humour was there more, the plot actually made a little bit more sense and I think maybe because I'm in the, I don't know, just a different frame of mind now than I was then. Maybe at the time I wasn't feeling like too many big books was something I wanted at the time. At the moment I'm quite able to handle large books which this definitely is. So it was more enjoyable for me overall and it is a big epic fantasy of very much of what was inspired by um, J.R.R. Tolkien and obviously the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit you know an epic adventure with evil forces at um, play and you know, a road band of people that has to you know fight against the darkness it's all traditional but fun and well written and I greatly enjoyed it and Andrea will almost certainly talk about this far more eloquently than I managed the penultimate book for this video I read was Pedido Street Station by China Miaville. This was also a reread and I read this literally the month before I actually started this channel in December 2013 for the first time so this is only the first ever reread of this book and I enjoyed this book just as much on a reread as I did the first ever time and this was when I read it originally the first book by Miaville I have read. At this point I have read nine of his books now so I kind of do know what his writing style is like and his ideas are like which are frankly very strange and very weird but very deep and also very meaningful. The plot line of this is very simple it's set in the universe of Buzz Lug, which is a world which he has wrote two of the books in which I've also read and greatly enjoyed and did, I did a review of the overall world and books and the city of New Kabaizen, which is a f sort of mashup of all our big um, Earth capital cities like New York, uh, Washington, D New York, London, ob is obviously playing a big part. All that big European cities also sort of come into play in this book because whilst the plot is about um, a very sort of dark and evil creature, is essentially released onto the, an unsuspecting city and the city has to fight back and there's several different sort of character sets that you are focused on the one in particular it is the city that is the focus and indeed becomes a character in its own right it is a living breathing city it's not a nice city it's dark dirty there's lots of crime going on there's lots of people just trying to live perfectly good happy life you know trying to bring up their children and be happy there's a lot of people trying to steal off them and kill them for that as well so this is a working city not a nice city but it's a real city and it's almost a character in its own right and frankly i think it is a character in its own right which is not something you normally say about a non-sentient um entity but with this the city is a person essentially and I really enjoyed this book no end and I would very much recommend it. And finally the last book that I read was Roadside Picnic by Arkady and Boris Strugatsky. I hope I pronounced that so name incorrectly. Now this is a very well known book by um, this pair of Russian brothers. Um, this was written uh, many years ago many years ago in the 70s I believe around then I think it's early 70s and I like the concept of this which I've heard of before this is about uh, a series of zones have been created by this 
alien species on Earth. The aliens aren't around anymore, but the zones are still there, and they are really strange. There are all sorts of weird and often lethal effects in these zones, like super lethal uh, gravity that will just literally pull you about and tear you into pieces and crush you, like a, almost like a miniature black hole. And there's other strange and weird effects, obviously like radiation and stuff as well, there are, there's there. And it's about one guy who just wants to make a living in this, um, by going into the zone and getting artifacts and bringing them back and selling them, which is obviously illegal ever because you're not meant to go into the zone. They are quarantined areas, but it still goes on and he's indeed a stalker. The term stalker is a well-known one. And indeed, he's one that was basically created specifically for this book and it's been used for many other things, including a computer game, which was made in 2003, I believe, which I actually played and really enjoyed at the time. So I kind of knew the concept of this because of that computer game. I did like the concept and you sort of like the characters, but I wish um, they had done more with the zone. I felt as though the book was well written and, it, and the focus was, in the, was on the right places. It just, I wanted more from the book. The idea of the zones is fantastic. But each part was very, very brief. I just wanted it to be li quite literally double the width for this book, you know, twice the page count, and more ha to happen in each area. I would have enjoyed that more. But other than that, it was a good, solid book, and it had some very interesting ideas, solid writing, and some curious characters, which I would recommend overall. I really would. So, with that said, that is it for all of the books I read in January. This is a very large and very heavy stack of books. I do not know how I'm going to do the thumbnail for this video, which should be interesting because this is a lot of books. If you have read any of these books or would like to, or you have recommendations for me on books you think I might like based on what I've talked about, then please leave a comment and we can have a discussion. Uh, all of the links to the people that I mentioned as well as my social media links can be found in the description box below. And with that said, that is it for this video. So thank you for watching and I'll see you another day. Bye for now.